this is Liz from Kingdom Police and Fiber Works. We have a fiber mill in Vermont and I just wanted to say hi and welcome and I'm just going to go over a little bit on how we wash our wool. So I'm here in the mill today and I was washing so I figured I would do some tape a little bit of how we do our things here and how we wash our wool in the mill here. And Make sure, thing I always forget to tell you, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, all that stuff so that way people can see this. Um, I tend to forget it and if you don't like it and you can't see it, then people don't get as, it doesn't, it gets lost. So if you do see this, make sure you like it for me. Thank you. Um, so I am just going over the last video. We went over how we prep everything for skirting and getting everything ready for the fiber processing and this is the very beginning stages so the first part first video was the skirting and getting this so this is going to be how we wash our wool so that way in case you want to wash it at home um, washing at home is not hard just be careful if you have a septic system I would not put it down the drain put it dump it outside do something make sure you're doing it probably in the warmer weather so that way, or if you're in warmer climates, you can do it outside in buckets or something like that. You don't want to put it down the septic because the lanolin will eventually add up and ruin your septic system. So be careful. Um, but once we have everything skirted and now it's all just the good wool, then the next step is to wash it. And here we use a commercial wool scour, but I know many people like friends of mine that drop off their fiber and they wash it for themselves and they just use Dawn and it works fine. So as long as you're doing a good job of it, you shouldn't have a problem. And even if we have to rewash it, you're getting out a majority of the wool, so it's still going to save you. It saves on the weight, it saves on, because processing is usually based on the weight. So it'll save, um, it'll save all of, it'll be that much lighter when you drop it off. So even if we do have to wash it once, because here we cannot have any wool, uh, any lanolin on the fiber. There has to be no lanolin. You can't have any kind of stickiness, nothing. That is a big no-no here because it'll ruin the carter, it'll ruin your wool. Um, it's, just, it's not good for anything. You know, It's not good for the picker, it's not good for the carter, and it just stresses your fiber out because with it having that drag on it will just pull on the fibers and not only will it ruin the carter, it's also going to pull your, rip your your fiber apart and ruin the locks and everything. It'll just be a nappy mess and you're not going to want that to happen. So I won't put it on the carter if there's grease in it. I will rewash it. And even if you think it is, after you pick it, a lot of times you can pick it open and then you'll still feel grease and you have to rewash it. So that's where it gets a little tricky. So you have to kind of just but if you want to wash it yourself or you're processing it for yourself, you could be processing it for yourself and combing it at home or making roll eggs or putting it on the drum carter, you could do it that way. But this is how we do it here. Um, I think it's pretty much this, it's not rocket scientist. It's just time consuming and you need to have space for drying it and that kind of stuff. So it's not hard, it's just, it just takes time. So it's a matter of how much time you have and patience and all those kind of things. But I'm gonna switch the, lower the camera so that way you can see what I'm doing. Okay, we're down low now. So hopefully you can see this. Um, we have, we use really big laundry bags. Um, these are just, we can get, you can get them anywhere. They're just the laundry bags that you get like for college laundry bags. And this is all the skirted fiber. And the key for washing these fleeces, especially depending on if they're really greasy, that is one really big thing. Open them up as much as you possibly can. The more locks you break apart and open up, so we call it fleeces pieces here. And the more the fiber you open up and pull apart and get into the bag, um, the higher, you know, you, you're going to get a better outcome in the long run because this will be nice and open. So, um, we just keep taking these laundry rings, and I like to have a nice even layer. I can't say, I've never really weighed it, I just kind of eyeball it. You don't want to cram it full. 
if it's crammed full, then you have too much. You want to have a nice even layer that the water can get through. Uh, so that way when you're washing it, the water can go through it. So if you were just doing it in a five gallon pail, you're going to want a smaller laundry bag or a smaller like lingerie bag or one of the little ones. Um, just because you're not going to want to put as much in here with these ones. So I just literally like take all these pieces and just open them up and just make sure everything the water can get through. If they're big clumps, you're going to want to open those clumps up. And this is not a way of doing it. If you want to keep your lock structure, this is not going to be the way to do this. This is for if you want to cart it, drum cart it, probably put it, you could probably put it on combs and comb it that way. Uh, but definitely not one if you're going to keep the locks. Because we do not, we're carting everything here, so we just need to get everything done. So yeah, so see how this is like kind of one piece, it's a big chunk, you're going to want to open it up as much as you can. The better you open this up, the higher, you know, you're going to get all of the lanolin out of it. And don't forget to keep looking for like any fleece breaks while you're there. That's usually something I keep an eye on. Um, and any of like, uh, why can't I think of like burrs and burdock and stuff like that? That's where usually you find them is when you're pulling them all apart. So then once I have a nice even layer, I just kind of cinch, cinch up the bag and I don't know, hopefully, yeah, so I don't know, there's probably a couple of pounds in there or whatever. Um, but yeah, so then I add and I put, we have a big, we have big laundry sinks. And I need another bag. So we have big laundry sinks. So we can put usually three, if three, maybe four, but depends on how greasy it is. If it's, what's that noise? Um, if it is super greasy, you're going to want to put two or three. And not, you know, if there's not a lot of grease, then you can probably get away with four bags. But you want to have it so the water can get through everything. So I like three. That's my magic number in the laundry sinks. And so, yep, see, I just take and pull all of these things apart. Big pieces, I just take this and pull them all apart. So there's the next step. So I'm going to continue on keeping filling these bags and then once I get back, I will show you the next step. Here you can see me filling up the sinks. We have three laundries in a row. If you're using sinks, you can fill it up with the hottest water you ha can have. We use water that's as hot as our water heater will go. Okay, now that the sinks are full, it's time to put the bags that we filled up into the sink and let them soak. We just put them in gently as long as there's enough water in the sinks for them to move. So depending on the size of your sink, just adjust as needed. Next, we have put our soap in the, in the sinks. It doesn't really matter if you do it before or after. I use two scoops of soap. Right here is not laundry detergent. It's actually commercial wool scour. But instead you can use probably, start with a quarter, a quarter of a cup of Dawn. Dawn is more sudsy, so you would use less for that reason this soap does not create as many suds so we don't have to worry about that as much but i would start on a smaller amount and always add more or do more washes if you need to 
Next we let it soak. For me, we have a, a chalkboard right here, so we put in what wash we're on. Usually we do two washes and two rinses. If it's super greasy, we'll pull the fiber apart again and add a third wash in between. Okay, after the fiber has been sitting for about 15 to 30 minutes, you don't want the water to sit too long for it to cool off and then the lanolin will reset onto the fiber. So after you've been sitting, if it's been sitting, you want to drain the, drain the sinks and we, what we do is put it in an old wash machine where we can spin it out. It's not hooked up to water so you don't have to worry about that. We just put it on the spin cycle and it spins and drains all of the water out of it and helps get more of the muck out of there. If you don't have that, you can just drain your fiber, whether it's in bins or whatnot in the yard, drain those and let them kind of prop them up so that way you can get out as much water as possible. It'll just get it that much cleaner faster if you can get more water out of them. And then the next thing to do will be to fill up the sinks or your bins again with really hot water. This is just a visual so you can have an idea of what you're looking at. This is what the water is going to look like after the first wash. It's totally gross and yucky and it's got all the lanolin in it. The one on the right hand side is a wash that I was doing in unison on, as a different one which is probably the second or third wash. You can see the water is much cleaner. I was just wanting to give you a little comparison of what it's going, what, what it's going to look like. So we're on to the second or through the second wash we're finishing it up it's been soaking for about 15 to 30 minutes you can kind of see that the water has some milkiness to it it's probably got a little bit of lanolin left in it maybe some dirt and from here you're going to want to actually pull it out of the sinks or bins and let the fiber drain while it's draining you're going to notice and check to see if you can hear any of the bubbles in the fiber. That's usually my indication of whether or not I can tell if the fiber is fully done and there's no lanolin left because that is the key is for, for the mill you do not want any lanolin and when you have the soap, what the soap does is it is around all the fibers and gets rid of the lanolin so you can hear the soap bubbles. And when you hear the soap bubbles, usually you know the lanolin is gone. So that's when I hear that crinkly sound, that's when I know it's the lanolin's most likely gone and it's time to start rinsing. Okay, here we go. We are on the final stages of fleece washing. We are spinning it out, making sure we get as much water out as possible. We filled up the sinks with some clean, hot water, and then we're going to put the fiber into the sinks and let them soak for another. You don't probably have to soak them as long as possible. Um, but for about another 15 minutes or so and just make sure you can get out as much soap. This I usually do twice. If you can still hear soap in it, then I would repeat it again until you don't hear any more soap or feel any soap. Um, in order to save water, we actually alternate and rotate soaps. So here in the mill, water is very limited. We've definitely run our well dry so we're very super we're super careful so if you can see the sink on the left hand side that one is alternating so this one's a first it's the first rinse in this batch the one on the left is probably we're reusing the water 
and use it as a first wash for the next, you know, it was the first wash for another order. So that way we can use up as much hot water as possible so we don't run out of water. We're super careful when it comes to that because water is definitely um, precious to us here in the mill. So we try and recycle as much hot water as possible. So here you can hear me going through it and you can try, I'm trying to hear if I can crinkling and making sure I dang like the soap suds. And if I hear that, that's when I know that we've got all of the lanolin out of it and I can put it into the sink to go in for a rinse. I just like to open it up and double check, especially if it's a greasy fleece. If it's greasy, if you're washing merino or something like that, TVM, the grease cormo is a huge one. Um, the grease, the lanolin in between in the fiber, so you really have to open up and double check to make sure you've got all of the lanolin. In fact, it's not a guarantee 100%, um, you know, but it's as close as we can get to it without having to rewash we rewash something um, sometimes you can't sometimes you just can't avoid it you have the fiber dry you go out there in the morning and you start pulling things apart and you can feel lanolin and if that's that's when you kind of know you've um, have to rewash things unfortunately it does happen finally I just want to leave you with once everything is rinsed, the soap is out, fiber is looking nice and white and fluffy, you can hang it up on some drying racks to dry. There's so many ways you can do it. There's some laundry racks that you can get. Um, another thing that you can get too is like use your skirting table. You have your skirting table from, that's what we use a lot when we run out of space is um the one you know just the the chicken wire fencing something like that that we use for skirting you'd lay it out to dry if it's nice out if you're further south than we are and have no so you can just lay it outside and it'll dry in no time i would just put something over it so it doesn't blow away because that has happened to me in the past Okay, I just wanted to go over everything that we just went through, through washing. So making sure that you have hot water. Don't ever go from cold to hot because you will felt your fight, felt your wool. As long as you keep getting the water hotty, hotter, you will not felt your fiber. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, don't poke at it too much. Don't agitate it. Um, we usually do two washes and then two rinses and that usually fit you know usually covers everything and gets it okay if you open it up after you wash it don't be afraid to open it up again and rewash it because we have to do that every once in a while too especially for greasy fleeces so um, skirt everything put it in bags make sure it is nice and loose and the water can get through them if they're super smushed into the bins or sinks or whatever you're using then you're not going to be able to get the grease out because they don't have any room to like breathe kind of thing you know the water is not going to go through there to get that um, soap in there to do its job so just make sure you do those kind of things I am going to put a written version of my directions and a checklist so that way you can go through all the things and maybe hopefully you don't forget anything um, that you can print out and then it'll be on the website so you can download it print it out and then when you're washing you can kind of go through the checklist and make sure you got it covered i hope this helps if you have any questions just message me write in the comments send me an email whatever do whatever you want to do just send me a message ask me questions and i will be more than happy to help you out if you have any um, make sure you like and sub subscribe i can never say that um, but yes, make sure you like and subscribe. That way people can see this and hopefully it'll help other people. I will talk to you soon. Bye.